Hello and welcome to this week's PV Tech newscast. Coming up, Solyndra raided by the FBI, German PV companies restructuring, and the PV company fighting drought in Madagascar. The Solyndra saga continues with news that the Federal Bureau of Investigation has raided the company's offices and demanded interviews with CEO Brian Harrison, as well as co-founders Chris Grone and J. Kelly Truman, as well as former executives of the company. Many of the workforce have filed class action lawsuits for unfair dismissal. The FBI is said to be conducting the investigation in collaboration with the Department of Energy's Inspector General's office, suggesting the investigation is targeting potential issues over the DOE's $527 million loan guarantees to Solyndra. Another of the recent US-based PV manufacturers that went bankrupt, SpectraWatt, will auction off its 140,000 square foot crystalline silicon cell manufacturing and research facility in Hudson Valley at the end of the month. Here's Warren Major with more. Despite the latest Solyndra developments, the US Department of Energy has finalized another loan guarantee, this time for $90.6 million to Cogentrix for the 30 megawatt Alamosa solar generating project, which uses Ammonix high concentration PV dual access tracker systems. When the utility scale installation is completed next year, the site will be the largest CPV-based power plant in the world. Another DOE loan guarantee has officially been finalised and will see 1,366 technologies expand wafer capacity. Phase 1 of the project will be built in Lexington, Massachusetts, with the company looking at other site locations for its second planned phase. The funding enables the company to produce 700 to 1,000 megawatts of silicon-based wafers annually with its novel direct wafer technology. Rapid price declines and increasing competition from Asia-based PV manufacturers has resulted in some of Germany's most well-known PV companies starting to struggle. Qcells, Solon, Conergy and SolarWorld have all announced restructuring efforts primarily around manufacturing operations. The most recent to announce production cutbacks was Conergy during the week of EU PVSEC. The company said it would halt its solar cell and wafer manufacturing operations, while PV module production at its highly automated plant in Oder, Germany, would continue manufacturing. Dr. Michael Alexander, senior advisor at Roland Berger Strategy Consultants, analyzes the problems US and European players are really facing. Now um, we already have very large companies. We have companies with established manufacturing bases and established customer bases, um, even acting globally. And your, VC, your, your technological concept uh, as a VC company really has to be revolutionary that you can cope with all these advantages that the others have gained meanwhile. Conergy said that overcapacity, price pressures and the inability to cover the costs of wafer and cell manufacturing had forced it to discontinue production for the time being. Starting in December, the company will source the cells for its modules from external suppliers that it had previously worked with. With PV solar cell manufacturing advances a cornerstone of the 26th EU PV SEC last week, a slew of new metallization pastes were being showcased, intended to push cell efficiencies higher and manufacturing costs lower. Frontside metallization paste materials in particular are a hotbed of development due to the rising cost of silver. Putting the pedal to the metal has never been so intense with metallization paste developments responsible for significant cell efficiency gains that are pushing conventional screen printing processes towards 20% efficiency levels. New cell architectures and process technologies will soon enable copper to provide life after silver, further reducing manufacturing costs and boosting cell efficiencies. Experts are excited about the potential opportunities copper may bring. We have made big steps forward in relation to integrating copper in a more industrial solar cell process. We have of course had good results already mentioned in the past, 
Uh, but what I'm most uh, happy about is that we could reproduce these results now in more industrial process flows. Um, and that's what's really making me happy. And we think in this way, uh, with this speed, we can develop an alternative which will ensure the cost competitiveness of crystalline silicon solar cells. We need to make efficiency gains, and I don't just mean pure cell efficiencies, but making them um, more able to do their job more efficiently and uh, you get higher values out of the adhesion and the efficiency and so on. And so when you do that and you probably take away the primary intention of the material system, you can then look probably at different metallurgies or reducing the amount of silver on the surface. The demand for silver is pushing the price up very significantly and it really is becoming a problem for the industry. So with our Pluto technology we've avoided the use of screen printed silver and instead we use copper. Now copper is a much lower cost um, material to use for our photovoltaics and that's one of the reasons why the Pluto technology is a lower cost technology than our standard screen printed cell. The significant fall in solar module prices in the first half of the year has fueled a huge jump in the PV project pipeline in the US, according to a new report from market research firm SolarBuzz. Only two months ago, SolarBuzz reported that the US non-residential pipeline had reached 17 gigawatts, yet this has now climbed to 24 gigawatts. Benefiting the most in megawatt terms from the pipeline has been first solar, sun power and sun tech, according to SolarBuzz. The top six state pipelines were said to be California, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, New Jersey and New Mexico. Utility-driven project activity is now evident across 35 states. Here's SunPower's global power plant group president, Howard Wenger. We built the largest power plant in the world in 2004 in Bavaria, 10 megawatt solar power system. So it shows you how far we've come. Whereas uh, we were doing 10 megawatt systems uh, five, six, seven years ago, today we're doing 200, 300 megawatt systems. Our total pipeline is uh, on the order of five gigawatts worldwide. And we're doing much more of our business now in the US because of some of the policy changes in Europe. For the past 27 years, Tenasol, a subsidiary of French oil giant Total, has pioneered the use of solar technology to produce electricity and safe drinking water in remote locations. Recently, Tenasol embarked on its latest solar mission project to fight drought in rural Madagascar. The company agreed to take on the project for free. This five-week expedition is bringing clean drinking water to five isolated communities in the west of the country. As with many developing countries, the majority of the population do not have access to clean drinking water. For Madagascar, this means 70% of the 18 million population. In June this year, the first PV system under the new project was installed. Situated in Ampasimpotsi, to the east of Antananarivo, the system pumps fresh drinking water from depths of 40 metres up to the surface. Powering the system, which can deliver around 5,000 litres of clean drinking water a day, are three 135 watt peak PV modules from Tenasol. The pro bono work is being carried out by volunteers from Tenasol who are using their own holiday time to complete the project. The company has installed more than 4,000 solar water pumping systems and 5,000 rural electrification systems at isolated communities worldwide. Well, that's it for this week. Join us next time when we'll bring you a final review of innovative technologies coming out of EU PVSEC. Thanks for watching.